So today uh, we get started with the basic concepts. So this is going to be the first part of the course. Um, in the basic concepts, what we'll be doing uh, is this. Uh, we'll start with some of the basic definitions. Uh, there we will cover what we mean by an argument, and since each argument consists of a premise and a conclusion, and then we are going to talk about what constitutes a premise and what constitutes a conclusion, and then when the premises are leading to the conclusion uh, is the one which we will be interested in. So first we will talk about some basic definitions, uh, then uh, we will talk about uh, certain things which are which come under the category of non arguments. So basically they are non inferential uh, passages uh, and then we, uh, we move on to two different kinds of arguments one is uh, deductive argument another one is uh, inductive argument and all basically we will be interested in studying the difference between the inductive and deductive arguments. So once we find out the deductive and inductive arguments then we will move on to some of the basic and important properties of logic. So they are validity, validity talks about how the premises is leading to the conclusion. So after all logic is all about what follows from what in this case the premises how the premises are leading to the conclusion uh, is uh, uh, studied by uh, what we call it as validity uh, it is not just enough that the arguments are valid so it has to be sound also for example if you have uh, there are many arguments which are valid but does not make any sense you know. for example if you take into consideration um, all circles are squares. Uh, uh, the, the other way around it is uh, all squares are circles all circles are parallelograms then all squares are parallelograms and all. Although, the, although the conclusion seems to be uh, true but the premises are false and all. So soundness will take care of uh, uh, the fact that it is not enough that the argument is valid but your premises of your argument also has to be true and all. So in the argument that I explained uh, the, uh, the premises are false but the conclusion is true enough. So we want to avoid such kind of uh, arguments in which uh, the argument is valid but uh, it is not sound enough. So we will talk about soundness of deductive arguments and then when it comes to inductive arguments we will talk about uh, whether they are weak or whether they are strong etc. So then there is an important method with which you will come to know the invalidity of an argument. So that method is called as countering counter example method. So what we will do in the counter example method is this that we will create an instance where you have true premises and a false conclusion. So if you can come across with an example where you have true premises and a false conclusion then the argument is invalid. So then uh, one of the important things which we, we are going to study is one important model of an argumentation. Uh, it is basically you know, we want to know when an argument is a good one, when an argument is a bad one. So if you want to, uh, you want to study in detail what constitutes a good argument and what constitutes a bad argument then you need to know about uh, uh, it is one of the mo one model of an argumentation. You know. So it is one of the important models of argumentation is uh, due to a philosopher. Uh, his name is uh, Stephen Toulmin uh, he has come up with an interesting model where he talks about a, a model of an argumentation. So we will talk about the model of an argumentation at the end of uh, this thing. After all uh, this course is all about uh, logic uh, it is an introduction to logic course um, and uh, basically uh, logic is uh, basically considered as a study of argument and reason these are the two important things which will be interested in uh, logicians would be interested in it is a systematic study of arguments and reason. And one of the definitions which is given in one of the popular books of introductory introduction to logic uh, by Patrick Hurley 
is this is the following logic may be defined as an organized body of knowledge or science that evaluates arguments. So, it is important to study uh, arguments what we mean by an argument and uh, what constitutes argument and all. So, uh, one of the important questions that we will ask before going further is this what is logic this is one of the important uh, most difficult uh, things to define uh, it is just not just like you know defining physics or defining mathematics such that such as this thing logic is uh, almost everywhere it is used as basically a justificatory tool and all. So, traditionally logic has been considered as the most general science which deals with the arguments and the task of logic is basically to discover fundamental principles for discover uh, for distinguishing good and bad arguments. So, we have good and bad arguments now how do we distinguish between good and bad arguments that is what uh, uh, logic will take care of it. So, the other thing is is that the study of the uh, it also talks about the study of those general principles that make certain patterns of argument valid and other patterns of arguments invalid you know. So, this comes under the category of formal logic there are certain uh, arguments which are valid by virtue of the valid form and there are certain other arguments which are invalid just because it has got an invalid form and all. For example, if you have uh, A implies B and then A then B follows from these two. So, that argument is a valid argument since it exhibits valid form. So, the other uh, case of invalid argument is this that A implies if A then B then not A and then not B. So, this is called as a fallacy there is something mistake in the argumentation and it is an invalid form that is why the argument is invalid. So, uh, logic is also a study of those general principles that make certain patterns like uh, a implies B in A, uh, B follows from that which makes it valid whereas A implies B not A and then not B not B follows from these two things which is uh, making this argument invalid you know. So, logic takes uh, studies about uh, the distinction between these two different patterns of argumentation and all one is valid another one is invalid you know. invalid because of uh, the case that it has invalid form and valid because it exhibits valid form. So, we are talking about uh, uh, the study of argumentation after all this arguments are composed of uh, uh, composed in the, in the in the language and then uh, we have uh, three different functions of a language. Uh, so, logic is after all it is viewed as a language uh, uh, it has three basic functions. So, the first one is the logical function so, language uh, has the logical function especially when it is used to convey some kind of information. For example, if the sentence are uttered can be spoken as either true or false then these kinds of things are called as declarative sentences and all. So, especially when uh, the language is used to convey some kind of information and that information uh, can be uh, considered as either true or false uh, then it is used in the logical sense. For example, if you if I say there is only one door in this room you know. So, this sentence can be uh, can be spoken as either true or false you know. there is no middle value between this thing you cannot say that uh, it is neither true nor false or something like that. So, this kind of uh, sentence can be spoken as either definitely as true or false now. since there is only one door uh, for this room. So, the sentence is true uh, if there is uh, there are no two doors and all then if two doors are missing then it is co it's considered to be false and all. Another historical uh, thing is on September 1939 Adolf Hitler's army invaded Poland and it is an historical fact of course, we can verify with our historical facts and we can say that the sentence is true or false. Now. So, what is clear, uh, clear here is, is that the language um, uh, language is used to convey some kind of information uh, that information is uh, it can be spoken as either true or false. Now. So, language can also be used in an expressive sense in the sense that uh, uh, 
uh, it is indicative of some kind of emotions feelings etc. Example when you come across uh, some kind of uh, dirty cockroach or frog or something like that immediately we will express our emotions etc. You know, by saying that it is dirty cockroach or, or something like that. So it is used in a, in a sense of expressive sense you know. language can also be used in an evocative sense uh, the examples are like this language is employed to evoke response in others you know if somebody is talking to someone then uh, the other one person tries to evoke uh, some kind of uh, emotions in others and all. So for example you say if you are in a danger then you will cry you will shout and say save me you know, pardon me etc. You know. So uh, save me pardon me uh, etc and all these, these statements cannot be uh, spoken as either true or false you know. So, so for example the other things which uh, uh, can come under the category of uh, 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 this thing is there are certain types of questions like uh, what are we doing here etc and all. So these uh, cannot be spoken as either true or false. You know. So what we will be considering uh, uh, in this uh, course is, is that those sentences which can be spoken as either true or false are the things which you are going to take into consideration these are the basic units of our uh, the sentences are the propositions are the basic units of logic. So what are these propositions or what are these statements and all. So there is a, the precise nature of a proposition is a matter of some kind of philosophical debate there is no consensus on what exactly we mean by a proposition and all. Uh, but if you take into consideration the Oxford English dictionary and it is proposition is considered to be a noun which is considered to be a statement expressing a kind of judgment or an opinion or it is a proposed scheme of scheme or plan or a matter to be dealt with or a formal statement of a theorem or a problem. It looks like that the last one a formal statement of a theorem or a problem seems to be coming closer to what we mean by a proposition. So uh, in this course what uh, we take into consideration is this that a proposition is a simple sentence which can be spoken as either true or false. So it can also be called as a declarative sentences declarative sentence etc. So propositions statements sentences etc all these things are used in the same sense especially in this course. And all. Sometimes a proposition is also used as a claim or an assertion that affirms or denies that something is the case and all. For example if you say that it is raining outside then uh, suppose if actually that is a fact that it is raining outside then the sentence is true otherwise it is false. And all. So all propositions are either true or false and no proposition can be both true and both false or neither true nor false and all these things which we leave it out and all. So there are other logics which takes care of. Uh, uh, this particular kind of things and a sentence can be neither true nor false or a sentence can be both true both false will be taken care by some other logics which are which which come under the category of uh, non classical logics. The logics that we will be studying at least come under the category of uh, standard logics or the classical logics. Another definition of propositions are uh, this that propositions are the sole bearers of truth and falsehood. Other things uh, which uh, come under the category of uh, not under the category of propositions are these things questions commands exclamations uh, usually they do not express any proposition because suppose if you say that uh, what is your name and all uh, if you ask someone what is your name and all that, that kind of sentence cannot be spoken as either true or false and all. or if you say that uh, uh, shut up your uh, shut up and all suppose something you say like this then that that also cannot be spoken as either true or false and it is not a declarative kind of sentence. So those things that are, do not come under the category of propositions. So now so far what we have said is like this that a proposition or a statement or a sentence all these things we use it uh, uh, same kind of thing. So a proposition is a sentence which can be spoken as either true or false. 
the examples of uh, propositions are like this all triangles have three sides it is a mathematical fact. So for example if you say Akhilesh Yadav is the current chief minister of uh, Uttar Pradesh or if you say if today is uh, Friday then tomorrow is Saturday all these things can be spoken as either true or false. So now uh, we come to so far we are we talked about the basic units of an argument the basic unit of argument uh, is the proposition a statement or a sentence they are all one of the same. So now what we mean by an argument so again if you refer to Oxford English dictionary it is also considered as noun uh, unfortunately in the, uh, in the dictionary it is used in a, a negative sense usually when we mean uh, when we say that uh, you are arguing with someone else then it is usually considered as a, some kind of heated exchange of diverging or opposite views you know. for example child is arguing with his father for something then there might be some exchange of words etc you know. or a set of reasons in support of something that seems to be a better one which we can make use of. So this is not the one which we are going to talk about that means argument we mean it is not an exchange of uh, heated exchange of diverging or opposite views. So what we mean, in a, mean by an argument is is that it is a collection of statements that means those sentences which can be spoken as true or false leave out all the commands and other things and all questions etc. It is a collection of statements called premises and I will talk about what, what we mean by premises and in the final statement is what we call it as a conclusion. So the structure of an argument is this that it consists of a premise and it consists of a conclusion and especially in philosophy an argument is a group of two or more propositions that express some kind of inferential process and all so kind of inference and all. Inference is a mechanism with which you know you will come to know how the premises are leading to the conclusion. So what is an inference an inference is a mental process of linking propositions by offering uh, support to one proposition on the basis of more other propositions and all. Suppose you have uh, two propositions which serves as premises the other one is also another kind of proposition which will serve as a conclusion and all. So in an argument uh, we need to distinguish what is a pre, what is a premise and what is a conclusion and all because ultimately the premises has to lead to some kind of conclusion and all. If any one of these uh, things uh, is missing then it is not called as an argument and all. Uh, no argument uh, uh, you will not come across an argument which does not con does not consist of a premise and which does not consist of a conclusion and all and there is something it is like some kind of description or something like that. So what we mean by conclusion is is that conclusion is that single kind of proposition which is supported by the other propositions. So, so there are in, in an argument what we have is uh, at least you know three propositions out of these three propositions two seems to be supporting uh, the other one you know. so the one which supports the con uh, other proposition is called as a conclusion and those things which are going to support they are called as premises you know. So what we mean by a premise a premise is a proposition that provides a basis of support for the conclusion. So what I am talking about is simply this that in an argument we have a conclusion and we have a premise and all. So the premises usually support the conclusions our conclusion is supported by the premises. So now what we mean by a support etc and all when I talk about validity etc I will talk about what exactly I mean by uh, and a premise is supporting a conclusion and all. So usually uh, in the beginning we said uh, that uh, logic is also a study of uh, uh, good and bad reasoning and all I mean um, uh, good and uh, so we need to talk about what we mean by good inference good inferences are those in which the premises provide adequate support for the conclusion. And the bad ones are those in which the premises are inadequate uh, to this task and all. So in an argument we have we find found out that uh, there are premises and there is a conclusion and if the premises are supporting uh, adequately supporting the conclusion then uh, it is called as a good argument 
and the premises are not adequate enough to believe the conclusion to be true then it is called as uh, a bad argument and all. So, so then uh, we basically we just we are talking about some of the basic definitions of uh, uh, basic concepts of logic and in that you know we need to talk about uh, all these things. So then the next one next concept which we need to define is the inference. So again if you refer to Oxford English Dictionary uh, it is also considered to be a noun uh, inference is a kind of conclusion reached on the basis of evidence or uh, and reasoning. So the process of relating the conclusion by some kind of inferring. So in a technical sense it is the reasoning process expressed by an arguer in an argument. So the reasoning process employed in for example if you say all men are mortal Socrates is man and Socrates is mortal then in that uh, so uh, Socrates is mortal is inferred by uh, these two pre uh, premises that you know all men are mortal and Socrates is man and all. So this process of uh, moving from all men are mo all men are mortal Socrates is man to Socrates is mortal this process is called as a kind of inference process. So then uh, once we identify uh, this uh, arguments and all then it is important to distinguish between formal and informal arguments and all. So a formal argument is uh, like this suppose if you say the IITK administration must either energetically support the development of battery powered autos in the campus or else suffer increasing atmospheric pollution and the premise to says this is that IIT Kanpur must not suffer increasing atmospheric pollution. So it is denying the uh, in the first uh, premise. Uh, the first line suggests that it is an antecedent and the second one uh, suggesting us that it is a consequent and all. So uh, the conclusion is this that the IIT Kanpur must energetically support the development of battery powered autos in the campus and all. So this particular thing has uh, this particular kind of uh, format uh, the format is like this so this has uh, this particular kind of structure. So the first one is A and the second one is B and then we are denying the conclusion and then you need to deny the antecedent. And all. So uh, this argument uh, is uh, by virtue of the form it is a valid kind of argument and all since it exhibits a valid form it is a valid argument. For example if you say that A implies B and then not A then if you infer uh, not B then this is not a valid argument and all. So why it is the case I will explain it a little bit later but uh, uh, this is a valid form and this is an invalid form invalid form since it exhibits invalid form it is an invalid argument and all and it is interesting to note that in an invalid arguments which usually exhibits in invalid forms irrespective of what you take into consideration for A and B whatever you substitute here for A and B they are just representing some kind of prepositions. So whatever you substitute for A and B that is going to be uh, since it is a, it exhibits invalid form and all it is going to be invalid only. So, so the example that we spoke uh, we are talking about come under the category of uh, the first one this so so the IITK administration must either energetically support the development of battery powered autos in the campus or else uh, suffer an increasing atmospheric pollution and all so actually this uh, uh, is usually represented as p r q that is the first thing and then uh, then it is IITK must not suffer an increasing atmospheric pollution. So this Q is represented as this thing then uh, this there is a rule in logic which says that 
P R Q and not Q then uh, it leads to this one P. So this is the one which we have to represent it for this example. So so the IITK administration must either, either energetically support the development of battery power autos is represented by P and uh, uh, or else it will suffer increasing atmospheric pollution is represented as Q. So now the second premise says that IITK must not suffer increasing atmospheric pollution that means it is not Q. So then uh, P or Q and not Q is the case then obviously Q is ruled out so P has to be the case and all. so IITK must energetically support the development of battery powered autos in the campus and all. So this is uh, this comes, comes under the category of uh, disjunctive syllogism so this is going to be valid uh, whatever you substitute for P uh, Q or uh, the which constitutes the propositions and all in this particular kind of case and all. Suppose if you look into the other one uh, the one which I, uh, I showed it on the board the argument 1 numbered 1 so A implies B and not B and not A so that is also come under the category of valid arguments and all since it exhibits valid form and, all. and the second one A implies B and not A and if you say not B then it is in invalid argument. One example which we can take for the second argument which is called as uh, which is considered as invalid argument uh, you can say that if the grass is wet then uh, if it rained then the grass is wet for example it uh, just try to use this thing for the second one if it rained then grass is wet. So this is the first sentence which we are talking about you are talking about example 2 and all so this is the third example if it rained then the grass is wet obviously if it rains then the grass will be wet only so so this is represented as A and this is represented as B so now not A is it did not rain it did not So now from these two arguments if you infer that uh, grass is not wet grass is not uh, if it rained then the grass is wet and it did not rain then the grass is wet. So Suppose if you have said that if it rained then the grass is wet and it indeed rained and all then you can say that grass is wet and all. So in the second example uh, we can come up with uh, some kind of counter example uh, with which you know your premises are true and the conclusion can be false and all. Um, so this is an uh, invalid form so that is why it is called as invalid kind of argument and all. Um, if it uh, rains the grass is uh, wet and all so it did not rain then uh, suppose if you uh, infer this particular kind of thing in uh, one second suppose if you say even this also uh, grass is wet for example if you take this example into consideration A implies B and not A and then if you infer B and all so then uh, you will see the difference that uh, uh, it rained then the grass is wet that is obviously true suppose if uh, it did not rain that also is a matter of fact and all then you look at the conclusion the grass is wet and all so you can come up with a counter example you know grass can be wet in several other ways also. So you might uh, it might be the case that sprinkler might be on or somebody has uh, poured some kind of water into it or some water has come from somewhere etc and all apart from rain and all. So what is clear from this argument is this that if you if you write uh, A implies B and not A and from this 
you infer B and all this is clearly an invalid kind of argument and all it is invalid argument in the sense that it is invalid form and all and even in the example also you can clearly see that uh, if it rained the grass is wet may be true uh, it did not rain is also true then but still it is difficult for us to believe that grass is wet and all because of the fact that grass can be wet in several other ways you know so it, the sprinkler might be on or maybe some other reason and all. So that means we have come up with some kind of counter example in which the premises are true and the conclusion is false and all. So especially when the when it is a case that the premises are true and the conclusion is false then that is called as an invalid kind of argument. I will talk about uh, the validity part little bit later but what I am trying to say is, is that uh, just by seeing the form itself we can say that uh, it is a, a kind of formal kind of argument and all because the arguments that I have expressed on the uh, on the board has a clear cut form and all we can talk about validity or invalidity little bit later and all all these uh, uh, the ones which I have expressed on the board uh, I mean they are all formal kind of arguments and all. So then uh, what are considered to be the informal kind of arguments and all. So informal arguments are those arguments in which they do not express a specific kind of form and all then you need to analyze the content of the argument and all. So what is important here is, is that formal arguments uh, exhibit some kind of form and all just by the virtue of form you can say that uh, this is a formal argument. So for example in this case uh, P or Q or not Q and P the example that we have mentioned earlier. But look at this uh, other example which is there uh, here suppose if you say this particular kind of thing uh, somebody is uh, trying to uh, argue in this way. So he is saying this thing why do I have to study logic a question mark and then uh, and he says he goes on and says I am going to be either a movie star or a contractor like my dad. He goes on and says that he could not factor his way out of brick and all so there is no need to study logic and all. So in this particular kind of argument it does not exhibit any specific form and all like the one which we have earlier uh, we have P or Q and not Q and P but in this second example uh, we do not have any specific uh, form uh, which we can see in this particular kind of argument unless and until you analyze the content of the argument you will not be able to conclude anything in this particular kind of case. So those things which uh, those uh, arguments which uh, uh, requires the analysis of content they are called as informal kind of arguments and all. So now it comes to uh, the important question uh, that you know how to distinguish form and content of an argument and all because we are saying that any argument which exhibits special specific form and all like the one which you uh, showed it on the board they are formal arguments and the other ones are informal kind of arguments and, all. and informal arguments are those arguments which can be uh, for uh, which requires the analysis of content. So what is the form of an argument and all so the form of an argument is its logical structure or the manner in which the premises offer support to the conclusion and all. If you look at uh, uh, any one of these examples 1, 2, 3 and all forget about whether it is valid or invalid but they exhibit some kind of form and all. So P or Q and you deny the uh, deny Q and then obviously it leads to the other possibility and all P in the same way in the first argument A implies B and if you deny the consequent you have to deny the antecedent also where A is the antecedent and B is the consequent here. So in the second example A implies B and not A and if, if you say that B follows then that is uh, it also exhibits some kind of form and all but it is an invalid form so that is why it is an invalid argument and all. we will talk about validity little bit later and all but at this moment we are trying to distinguish between form and the content of the argument. So now uh, the form also describes the relationship between the premises and the conclusion. So you have to note that an argument that means the formal structure which is exhibited by 1, 2, 3 which are exhibited on uh, which are shown on the board 
they are not uh, considered to be true or false in all an argument cannot be true or false in all an argument can only be valid or invalid in all in the same way if you look at look into the prepositions um, then uh, a proposition cannot be valid or invalid in all a proposition can only be true or false. So this um, uh, this is a common mistake which uh, uh, most of the students make it and all so that is uh, this that uh, you have to clearly note that an argument cannot be true or false an argument can only be valid or invalid or maybe sound uh, maybe strong or weak and all in case of inductive arguments. So only propositions can be both uh, can be true or false uh, suppose if you say this particular kind of thing this argument is little bit funny and all suppose if you say if elephants can fly then the rocks can float in water and all so you know that in elephants cannot fly that is why you know you are saying that uh, rocks can float in water so elephants can fly then the rocks can float in water and all so these are the examples which are far away from the reality at, uh, that we come across in day to day discourse so but the thing is that uh, these kinds of arguments uh, still exhibit some specific kind of form so they are considered to be uh, in this case uh, if elephants can fly then the rocks can float on water it can be represented as A implies B and the elephants can fly uh, is represented as A then the rocks can float in water is represented as B. So A implies B and A and uh, from this B follows. So this is a perfectly valid kind of argument and all but it does not make any sense to us so unless until you know the arguer is trying to make some fun out of uh, fun of someone else and all or something like that he can use make use of this particular kind of argument. But you have to note that this this argument uh, exhibits some kind of valid form that is why it is a valid kind of argument. So uh, if you take uh, the other uh, thing into consideration uh, uh, content of the argument uh, the content of an argument is the group of actual propositions that comprise the argument. Uh, so it is with respect to the content alone that we may consider its truth and falsehood and all falsehood of the preposition. So these prepositions are true or false with respect to some kind of context etc. and all we have to analyze the content of the preposition so that then only you will come to know whether it is true or false you have to put it in into the context and all. Suppose if you take into consideration this one this is a very funny example uh, key is better than nothing uh, obviously anyone who is uh, hungry and all uh, if he has nothing and all if he is presented with key and all obviously you will be very happy. Then the second uh, preposition is this that nothing is better than eternal happiness and all. Of course everyone is uh, in this world is craving for uh, is uh, striving for some kind of eternal happiness and all. after all the purpose of life is to be happy and all. So nothing is better than eternal happiness if these two are considered to be true then obviously uh, you infer that key is better than eternal happiness and all key is just a some kind of material kind of need which we we need it and all for coming out of hunger etc and all but that may not give us some kind of eternal happiness and all so clearly if we don't analyze the content of the uh, argument and all that means the premises that you have used here this argument seems to be perfectly valid kind of argument and all so unless or until you analyze the content of the uh, argument you will not come to know whether it is uh, valid or invalid and all. So these arguments requires the analysis of content and all. only if you can analyze the content of the argument then you will come to know that this is uh, valid or invalid kind of argument and all. So uh, at least you know no uh, we will not we will not believe this particular kind of thing key is better than nothing nothing is better than eternal happiness then key is better than eternal happiness and all. Suppose if you follow some kind of formal uh, structure for this one A implies, uh, A implies B, B implies C then A implies C and all but you know uh, the argument if you, if you do not take into consideration the content of an argument then there is no way to judge whether this argument is at least a good one or bad one and all. 
So now the second uh, issue is, is that we have said that logic is a systematic study of argumentation and it is also a study of different forms of reasoning and all. So that content can deal with anything uh, that is uh, it can be mathematics, it can be cooking, it can be physics, it can be ethics and whatever. So logic is basically used as a tool a justificatory tool you know which appears in all the subjects and all. So that is why you know it, it cannot be studied separately independent subject and all but uh, it is part and parcel of all these things and all. Uh, mathematicians use uh, tools of logic, uh, physics also, physicists also use tools of logic etc. And all. So when you learn logic you are what you are simply doing is learning the tools of reasoning that can be applied to any subject and all. For example there were rules that I have used on the board. Uh, they are inferential rules which can be used in any uh, any subject uh, matter uh, subject matter can be anything it can be mathematics it can be cooking it can be even physics etc. So basically logic is used as a justificatory tool. So now we have said that uh, uh, an argument consists of premises and a conclusion. So now we will go into the details of what we mean by premises and what we mean by a conclusion of an argument and then how to identify premises and how to identify a conclusion in a given argument. So one of the definitions of premise is this that premises are the statements that means a sentence can be spoken as a true or false that is the meaning of a statement that set forth reasons are evidence you know. So the statements for example if you are given a, a passage which consists of different group of statements. So in the passage suppose if you want to identify identify the premises and identify the conclusions then we need to define what we mean by premises. The premises are those statements which set forth reasons are evidence. So if you take into consideration Oxford English dictionary it says this thing and end a conclusion can be treated as this thing an end or a finish or summing up of an argument or a text or a judgment or a decision reached by reasoning settling of a treaty or an agreement etc is called as a conclusion and all. But in, in the course in logic what we use is this thing a conclusion is a statement that the evidence is claimed to support or imply a particular kind of thing. So premises set forth reasons or evidence etc and all and that these premises support some other kind of proposition the other proposition which we are calling it as a conclusion. For example, if you say all metals expands upon heating and iron is a metal, then iron expands upon heating and all. In this particular kind of argument, uh, iron expands upon heating is a conclusion, whereas it is supported by these two premises and all. All metals expands upon heating and iron is a metal. So the premises seems to be supporting the conclusion. If it adequately supports the conclusion, it is called as a good argument. If it uh, premises are not adequate enough to believe the conclusion to be true, then it is a bad argument and all. But we are not interested in good and bad kind of things. We are subjective kind of judgments, but uh, we use a different kind of term and all, validity, etc. So, what are the questions that we need to ask ourselves to identify premises and conclusion in a uh, given English language passage? And all. First, we need to identify what are premises and what are conclusions. Then once you identify premises and conclusion then you will look into whether the premises are leading to the conclusion whether the premises are giving sufficient evidence to believe the conclusion to be true or not is the one which we will think of. So now the most important question that we will ask is how do we recognize arguments that means recognizing argument in the sense that we need to recognize the premises we need to recognize the conclusion and then how these premises are leading to the conclusion is the one which we need to see how one distinguishes arguments from non arguments suppose in an English language passage and you found out some premises and your conclusion then the premises are leading to a conclusion then you call it as an argument and it has a specific structure and all the structure is this that it has premises and it has a conclusion and there is an inferential claim made in the arguments and all suppose if this kind of inferential claim is missing in some kind of passages let us say a group of statements leading to another one and all but this inferential claim is missing then it is called as a non inferential passage 
and that comes under the category of uh, non arguments you know. So basically what is that we are trying to do is, is that we are trying to distinguish between arguments and non arguments. You know. Arguments exhibit some specific type of structure whereas uh, non arguments we do not have such kind of structure. Uh, arguments are inferential whereas uh, non arguments are non inferential. So we talk about what we mean by inferential and non inferential little bit later. So only when an argument has been identified we will be able to critically examine in a clear and objective fashion it is the task of a logician to identify what uh, he means by an argument what uh, he has to come up with some kind of arguments then only he can judge whether he can start criticizing that particular kind of argument. He can say that the argument is not good enough or he can say that argument is uh, strong or weak or all these things he can come up with but for that you need to have you need to come up with an argument you know. for an argument what we need is premises and conclusion. So first and foremost thing which we will be doing is we will identify the conclusion and all. So the conclusion uh, there are some indicators for identifying the conclusion in a given English language passage and all. So what is happening here is you know you are given an English language passage which consists of group of statements and all. Uh, it is crowded with so many other things and all exclamatory or language is used in so many senses and all that is what we have seen earlier. So, so how to identify a conclusion in a given passage and all English language passage. Suppose if you are reading a newspaper and reading something else and all science scientific text or something like that. So how do you identify the conclusion and all in, in group of statements and all. So usually conclusion indicators are these things. So the statements which uh, which uh, and begins with uh, so therefore consequently accordingly thus hence the most basic commonly used one is therefore and consequently and all. this is the one which you usually come across in most of the uh, English language passages and all. Suppose if you come across another word which begins with a sentence which begins with hence or it can be inferred that suppose it begins with a, a phrase it follows that or from these facts it can be concluded that and then so and so and all or if you say that this implies that something follows after that or this entails that or it follows that etc. All these things are uh, will come under the category of conclusion indicators and, all. and you should note that this is not an exhaustive list. So there may be some uh, several other indicators and all. Uh, which uh, connotes uh, some of the meanings uh, of which, which we have used already. So it, it might come closer to maybe thus or hence or something like that therefore etc. There may be many other phrases which come under the category of uh, uh, conclusion. So now uh, once we identify with the help of a conclusion indicator that here is a conclusion in a, a given la English language passage. Then the next question that we need to ask is what are the premises you know what are going to be the indicator phrases for identifying the premises. Premises can be identified by uh, uh, these indicators and again the list is not exhaustive and uh, we are not saying that these, these, are, these are the only things which constitutes the premise indicators there may be many things which comes closer to one of these things. So just you know this is our task to identify uh, the premises and a conclusion once you identify the premises and a conclusion then we can say that there is the presence of argument and all once you have an argument then you can start criticizing it and all. So after all we are all talking about critical thinking. So, so what is a premise a premise is a previous statement from which another statement is inferred and all what is inferred is a conclusion and the previous statements are all premises and all. Uh, there are many phrases and words that provides clues to the uh, presence of a premise and these are the indicators and all because for since the most basic most commonly used word is since you know whenever you come across uh, uh, something which uh, begins with since or given that for the reason that as from the fact that etc or for the following reason uh, this follows from a uh, seeing that etc all these things comes under. Uh, the premise indicators once you identify one of these phrases and the, it begins with these kinds of sentences uh, sentences which follows after these things then we can say that uh, premises are present in a, a given passage and all. So, 
here are some of the examples in which you know you can identify uh, what are premises and what are uh, conclusions and all. So the first uh, look into the first example IIT education is a good thing but costly somebody is arguing like this a lot of st students depend on bank loans scholarships uh, to pay their tuition fees etc. Now suppose all of a sudden if banks discontinue loans scholarships and that would mean that fewer students could afford this IIT education because it is costly and all all of a sudden they stop these scholarships etc and all there will no way in which they can they can pay the tuition fees and all. So now in this kind of English language passage the one which we have said earlier is this that you have to identify the premise and conclusion indicators. So now the first thing which you need to find out a strategy is to find out the conclusion indicators. So now you can clearly see that in the last line of the first argument therefore is there. So whatever follows after therefore is considered as a conclusion. So hence the conclusion here is this thing discontinuing bank loans and scholarships would be a bad thing you know. So that is called as a conclusion now once you identify the conclusion you need to find out what supports this particular kind of conclusion because what supports this kind of statement are considered to be the premises and all. So the one which is previously followed by this conclusion are said to be the premises and all. For example all these things IIT education is a good thing but costly a lot of students depend upon bank loans scholarships pay their tuition fees etc discontinuing bank loans etc all seems to be supporting this the final fact that bank loans discontinuing bank loans and scholarships would be would be a very costly affair become costly for the student. Now consider the second example with this we will end this first lecture. So smoking is bad for your health so now the one in the bold letters is a premise indicator so because it destroys the healthy functioning of your lungs you know. anything that destroys the healthy functioning of your lungs is bad for your health. So now the first sentence smoking is bad for your health why it is the case you know it is supported by the statements which follow follows after the phrase because. So that is why smoking is bad for your health is a conclusion and then whatever follows after that seems to be supporting why smoking is bad etc. So in the same way in the third example punishment does not deter crime unless it, it is swift and certain unless until you give some kind of strong punishment and all this crime will continue and all the punishment is not shift swift and and certain in the justice system of India therefore whatever follows therefore the punishment does not deter crime in the justice system of India that is seems to be the conclusion and whatever is before that the punishment does not deter crime unless it is swift etc they are all considered to be premises and all. So in this lecture what we have considered is simply this that you know we have identified what we uh, we have talked about what we mean by an argument we said that argument consists of a premise and a conclusion then we also uh, talked about how to identify uh, a premise and a conclusion in a English language passage we said that whenever you have a premise indicators uh, you say that uh, the English language passage consists of a uh, premise and if you have a conclusion indicator then you can say that there is a conclusion present in the given passage. So now the next question which arises is this that suppose if the premise and conclusion indicators are absent in a given English language passage how to identify that it is a it is an argument or in the next lecture we will consider what we mean by a non argument how to distinguish arguments from non argument and what kind of specific structure argument will have all these questions which we will try to answer in the next lecture.